Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today I'm going to do a test that I've done before uh, a couple videos ago, but this one's going to be shorter and more to the point, and I think I've uh, figured out some issues I had with the last video. So uh, one of the viewers uh, wrote in and he offered to give me some help, and I haven't been able to hook up with him yet, but he got me thinking about the sampling rate. And so I kind of experimented a little bit, and I think I'm going to show you a much better result today. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the switching power supply power this amplifier, a second board that I have right here. And then we're going to compare that to the, the noise or the less noise from a linear power supply just to see the difference. Okay? And we're going to do it with, uh, I'll use the Unity. I'll first put like no signal in so it's just idling. It's just the noise from the power supply powering the amplifier just to see what we get as basically ambient noise okay and then what we'll do is we'll increase the power to some nominal power I think just 40 watts per channel something like that okay and we'll see what happens okay and one of the changes I've made is I'm using my Pico scope 4444 it's the differential input scope and I'm just using one channel and I'm going to come over here and look at the output with that this scope has a 12-bit resolution, so it's really cool and has great resolution, so you should see the noise floor really well. And I'm going to change the sampling rate so we get a good sampling from out to 20 kilohertz. We're going to just look at the audio band, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to start off with the uh, we're going to start off the linear power supply, okay? Let's start off the linear power supply. See how clean that looks, and then we'll powered up at this guy and we'll see you know how much noise if it's noise we think we live with or whatever who knows let's check take a look all right guys so now what i have is my pico scope 4444 it's the differential input scope and the other one would work fine with this too uh i just was experimenting so i had the scope on the bench anyway i've got a 50 kilohertz bandwidth and you can see my zoom window here so this window right here is 20 kilohertz that gives me 100 kilo samples per second. I think that gets rid of my aliasing problem I had, where I had that noise at 8 or 9 kilohertz, something like that. So now what we see is down here, we're down here in the weeds, a minus 72 dB at that grid line. This grid line is minus 58. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up power. So that is just where we were. That's kind of our ambient noise. Now here we are with no signal. Hasn't really changed much, right? Okay, I'm going to freeze this and I'm going to drop the power real quick. Because what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a reference. Okay, we'll save that. We're going to make it uh, green, I think. Okay, there we go. Okay, that. See over here we got a green scale. If I click on the scale, it shows me the same waveform in green. Okay, now the red one, I'll run it again. And you can see, when you save at any, you know, certain time, unless you're doing averaging, you're going to get a little bit of variation just as it's wiggling around, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and bring up the power supply. Okay, we got the power supply up and running again. This time we're going to bring the or one kilohertz signal up. And we're that should be, I think, close to 20 volts RMS. Let's click on the red waveform so you can see it. All right, and I'm gonna freeze that, drop it. Okay, that's waveform we wanna read. Now here's the peak of it. You can see it's point, uh, oh, I didn't, shoot. Here, let me get this. I have it on the wrong channel, these two. Okay, that's 24.98, so it's almost 25 dB. Uh, and this is a, almost one kilohertz and our THD is like 0.2 percent and uh, and I think is because I had I'm kind of pushing the signal up if I dropped down a little bit we'd see the THD I can show you that if you know we'll we'll look at that stuff in another video when we're really dialing it in right now I'm just kind of showing you all this stuff uh, here's the signal noise ratio 44 dB um, and that's from this signal up here to the next highest harmonic, which is probably that subharmonic, maybe. 
And then what else we have? Signal, noise, and distortion. Which this number, this looks like the same numbers as THC plus a noise, right? Okay, so there we are. Pretty clean. No, no real power supply noise. We're running off the HP power supply. That was with the HP power supply, by the way. Forgot to mention that, sorry. Uh, all we're seeing is the harmonics. Pretty cool. Okay. Okay, now what we want to do, now here, if I click on the green, you can see where we were down here. So the noise floor might have raised a few dBs, not very much. You know, we're still minus 58 dB is this line right here. We're way down there. So 26, you know, almost 25 dB down to the noise floor is way down here, minus 58. So that's... Geez, guys, every every 20 dBs you multiply by 10, so you're like 1,000 times lower signal down here, okay? And then up here, we have our harmonics, which are a little bit higher, but still below 30, this one right here, and 26, that's still 56, that's still almost 1,000 times right there, almost 60 dBs, so that's still pretty huge. That's where our THG is looking good. Um, all these things add up to something less than 0.2%. Still looking really good. Okay, now let's go ahead. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to our reference. And we're going to make this new one, our new reference right here, this B. Okay, and we'll change that to, okay, we had green. Uh, do we do another shade of green or... It would be, I don't know, yellow. I don't, here, let's try blue. So now we got green and blue as our two references for the HP power supply, right? All right, so the red one, again, we hit that, it'll just start running again, leaving the green and blue one alone. Okay, I'll click over here to get rid of that. Okay, I'm gonna switch power over and we'll try the AC. All right, guys, so again, what we're looking at is we have the green over here on the right and the blue over here on the left. Those are our reference signals saved. The red one is running right now, and we're going to go ahead and apply the AC power. The other two waveforms, again, were captured by the HP power supply. Here goes AC power. Okay, not much is happening. AC power supply. Awesomely is not here. Let me freeze it so I can turn off the power. I have the fan right next to the the computer here, and I have a plastic shield over it, so it's kind of worst case scenario as far as noise fa or fan noise. Okay. Anyway, so there's the red one. Now, one thing to notice is our reference signals were 26 dB and so is our red okay good so everything is at the same levels right now and um, that's because we have plus minus 50 volt range on our uh, signal coming in so that's why our dB scale stayed the same but if you notice click on the red it is it is right down there with the green one remember the green one was the here, let me see if I can just drag the, um, I'll drag the blue one up out of the way a little bit. Okay, so right now we just captured the red one. And the green one was the HP power spy. And look at that, the red, we have one little spike here. Let me go back to the green one. Yeah, the green one had that same spike. I am putting out a very small one kilohertz signal, so I think that's what that is. So that's why it's the same amplitude on both. But the red one, look at that. The green one actually has a little bit more noise. The HP had a little bit more noise between two to three and four kilohertz. So that's really interesting. The red one paints over the green ones over here at the low side. But if anything, the green one looks like it's a little higher noise, which that actually, you know, it could be because of the rectifier noise, the AC uh, 60 hertz, get it multiplied by 120 hertz to the bridge rectifier, and then harmonics from that maybe. 
here if I do this real quick and just bring over these cursors I can line them up on these because they're evenly spaced and we'll see what the frequency is between these okay I got that pretty close 110 Hertz so that's pretty close to 120 Hertz bridge rectifier so that is very interesting you know we could look at this closer in another video with the uh, AC power supply but I think this is the regulation of the uh, the DC power supply this these green because the red one the AC power supply actually looks quieter right now okay let me get rid of the cursor window all right so let's go back apply power again and this time oh, oh should I save that one I'll save it just for fun okay and then I'll uh, change this to another color instead of red that's where the linear was before we'll put something kind of similar in color pink pink and red are our DC and our AC with no signal okay now I'm going to bring the blue one back down here again actually you know what I think quick way to do that I think let's go ahead and let this go to auto and then go ahead and apply power and I think it'll auto range me so let's go ahead and do that okay we're up whoops up running okay we're up running now I'm going to apply that uh, same 800 millivolt input that gives me uh, fairly oh it didn't range it okay that's okay I'll fix that okay let's go ahead and freeze that turn off the power supply thought it auto range it okay there whoops thought I had it want to get them there we go minus two minus two all the way across all right so the one we just captured compared to the blue one right so let's see let's see there's red there's blue see the harmonics the amplifier we expect that part to be the same that the power supply is not going to change that but look at this again the red one the AC power supply look how much lower see there's blue spikes all the way across the the grass you know the noise floor the weeds the grass whatever you want to call it is taller in the DC power supply version see if I click on that one now I click on the red one you can see the red is slightly lower Wow all right well was not expecting that so it does seem like the AC power supply not only doesn't add any noise it actually looks like oh here THD 0.2 so really no difference as far as THD noise floor okay these numbers here these numbers look a little lower right minus 44 weren't I have to go back and look guys it's looking like we're getting a better a better deal with the switcher that is actually surprising and pretty amazing hey guys so what do you think was that surprising that the switcher actually was lower noise yeah you know I was a little surprised too in the beginning but then I thought about it and then it made a little sense that the linear might have a little noise down there at the low frequencies now think about this first of all if it's let's say 60 DB down that's only one millivolt one millivolt ripple that's not a big deal right and where's that ripple come from it's 60 Hertz power here in the US goes through a bridge rectifier gets turned into 120 Hertz and 120 Hertz pulsing DC right and then we smooth that off with big old bulk capacitors and we could put a CRC filter you know capacitor resistor capacitor or capacitor inductor capacitor that works great but we still are gonna have a little bit of ripple right I mean come on yeah one millivolt few millivolts that's not hard to believe right and you're gonna get that at 60 Hertz 120 Hertz and harmonics to that not only that imagine the linear power supply we keep calling linear I've talked about this before 
there's actually a switching action there. It's actually a low frequency switching power supply. And then it's turned into a linear regulator. But in front, you know, where the AC turns into DC, that's a switching power supply. So the input of the linear power supply, we have a bridge rectifier, and that's followed by bulk capacitors, right? Bridge rectifier, you know, transforms the voltage from a sine wave into pulsating DC at twice the frequency of the line frequency. So here in the US, 60 hertz, we got 120 hertz pulses. You know where you have 50 hertz? It'd be 100 hertz pulses. And then you have to have bulk capacitors to keep that voltage charge between humps. So as the input voltage is rising sinusoidally, and as that voltage on the anode of the diode becomes higher than the cathode of the diode on that bulk capacitor, it turns on briefly until the voltage starts to drop again. So you get this big pulse of current. Well, that big pulse of current has sharp edges, so you're going to get harmonics from that as well. So yeah, it's a switching power supply. If you have AC to DC, whether it's a bridge rectifier switching at 60 hertz, 120, you know, transforming to 120 hertz, it's still switching. You got diodes commutating on and off. You got two diodes turning on, they turn off. All diodes are off. Then the other two diodes turn on, then all, all diodes are off. And meanwhile, you get big old pulses of current at each, uh, at each, uh, you know, pulse, right? So there you go, switch your power supply. <laughs> so with this kind of switcher, that's why I went to switchers. Uh, we just switch a lot faster. We have a transistor, we tell it to switch it whatever this thing's switching at, you know, and you switch much faster, and then you only have to store the uh, voltage, or keep the voltage charged between very short pulses, so makes things smaller. And then, as far as filtering, LC filters, the L's don't have to be very big, because there's not very much, you know, frequencies a lot higher, right? So, anyway, there we go. What do you guys think of that? Now, I want to follow up and do a test where I do a pulse, an input square wave, and see what happens to the output. So when I do that test, should I do a single pulse? Should I do a train of pulses? If I do a train, do a 50% duty cycle, or what duty cycle? What frequency? Um, what rising edges should I try to get? Now, I can only go so fast, you know, with the equipment I have, but what do you think? Or should I slow the rising edges down so they're not too fast? I mean... Should I, you know, what do you guys think how I should do that test? And what other test do you think would be useful? Uh, let me know what you think of this video. And I hope this one made a lot more sense. The PicoScope 4444, the 12-bit uh, vertical resolution is awesome. And I think I got sampling right this time. So let me know what you guys think. And two big thumbs up to my patrons. Really appreciate you guys. You become a patron. Uh, links down below for as little as a dollar a month. Um, and, hey, I got shirts. Now, I'm going to have this circle, I think, moved up. What do you guys think? Uh, feels like it's a bit low to me. But we got hats, different colors, uh, different types and styles of T-shirts and colors. So, yeah, links for, uh, for that down below, too. Oh, and by the way, I had a birthday last weekend. So that's why this video should have came out last weekend. And uh, actually broke at the birthday and a couple of small parties so you know how things are these days so uh so yeah took a couple nights and just getting video out now so <laughs> hope you like it and if you did give the video a thumbs up that's a free way to support the channel and it really does make a difference so appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you next time